Hey everyone, and welcome to today's video. So here I've got my most recent Strat acquisition. And this is a Fender JV, or Japanese Vintage 1983 62 reissue. Um, and as the thumbnail suggests on this one, for me this is the best Strat I've played to date, and the one I've, certainly the one I've got on with the most. Normally I'm more of a telly guy, um, but I've liked this Strat way more um, than any other Strat I've ever played. So this video is going to have a lot of playing clips dotted throughout. I want to talk about why I like it as much as I do, um, and also shed some light on the history of Fender Japan, and specifically the JV. I think there's a fairly general consensus that the 70s wasn't necessarily the best decade for Fender and by the late 70s early 80s Fender were not only aware of a demand for pre-CBS style strats and tellies um, so 50 60 specs um, but also aware of a number of Japanese companies so companies like Tokai, Greco and Fernandez amongst others um, who were making successfully making replicas of um, these 50 60 style Fender instruments. So in 1982, Fender decided that rather than trying to issue these companies with legal notices and sue them, that they wanted to join forces. Um, so at this point, Fender signed a deal and Fender Japan was born. And as far as I know, I think the first run of Fender Japan guitars were actually built by the Greco team um, and may even have used some of the Greco parts. I'm not quite sure how long that continued for. Um, and if, if anyone knows better than I do, please let me know in the comments section. Um, but this was 1982 to 1984 and the goal here basically was to establish um, a Fender brand for the, for the Japanese market um, and these were the JV line, the Japanese Vintage. were very well received, um, initially intended to be domestic uh, instruments, so for sale in Japan, um, although not long after that an export line was established um, and this, these went to the UK, uh, then to Europe and then eventually a little bit later on into the US. And it was with these export guitars that the Squire brand was born, not in the capacity we know today as a budget Fender, um, but more so, um, actually in some cases these guitars were of higher spec than the domestic Japanese models, but more so as a way of differentiating between the domestic models um, and the export models, but also to make sure they weren't treading on their own toes with the US guitars, there was now a visual difference between guitars made in Japan and guitars made in the USA. This guitar is a 1983 um, and this is one of the export models so intended presumably for the UK market unless it went to Europe and then found its way to the UK. Um, it's got a red X in the neck heel um, and it's got the pencil date on uh, the butt of the neck there. Um, so this is either going to be a basswood or sen ash body and um, we've got USA pickups um, so a lot of the parts were sent over from the USA to then be assembled. Um, by the Japanese builders. We've got a slab rosewood board on here with a seven and a uh, quarter inch radius as you would expect. Um, the one thing that any uh, eagle-eyed JV fans will have noticed at this point is the headstock decal looks a little bit different to usual. So on an export JV typically this would say Fender and then Squire over here in little letters or it would say Squire here and Stratocaster um, as one long line across the headstock there. However, this one's got Fender, uh, it's got the with synchronized tremolo and it's got the pattern number underneath it. People did sometimes swap the Squire decal off and put a Fender one on top. Um, however, I don't think that's actually the case that's happened here. Um, the reason I think that is because, first off, that would be a really big job. You'd have to take all the lacquer off um, and if you wanted to do a good job of it, you'd have to take all the lacquer off the whole neck. Then remove the Squire decal, replace it with a Fender one and then re-lacquer the whole thing. Now for someone to do that, um, it's going to be a very big job, it's going to be an expensive job, um, probably leave behind evidence, every other one I've seen you can tell where the Squire used to be. Um, but also 
for someone to do that, they would have to hold historic accuracy in very high regard. Um, and if that was the case, they would have put the decal on top of the lacquer. So what I think is probably the case is this was maybe a prototype um, in the middle of when uh, Fender Japan was rebranding to Squire. I think this design was maybe conceived then um, and never made it to full production run. Having spent hours looking at these guitars online, um, I have actually seen about three or four others that have a decal similar to this with the pattern numbers, so I think that's probably the case there. It was maybe a prototype that never made it all the way to a production line. <laughs> reason I think this is the best Strat I've ever played uh, is the neck. The neck feels really nice. It's quite a slim neck um, but it feels very worn in. Um, it's got just the right amount of lacquer on it. Um, it also looks, um, I think the colour of it looks really nice. Um, it has had a refret at some point but with fairly vintage accurate frets they're not very tall. Um, maybe a little bit wider than traditional vintage frets but I'm still on the smaller side. I'm not really a jumbo um, fret fan. The other thing I'm really keen on is the pickups. Um, so these are the Grey Bobbin um, USA pickups. So um, a lot of the parts were shipped over from America to then be assembled by the Japanese builders. And overall, it's just a really, really well-built strat. It's a really robust strat. It stays in tune really well. Um, I've got the bridge decked. Um, in all honesty, I don't use Wami Bar very much, so I'm not bothered about having it floating there. Um, it's got a five-way switch. Um, some of the early ones will have had three-way, but obviously the five-way gives you those extra out-of-phase turns without having to balance the switch. I think I will be getting a nitro refinish on here at some point. Um, I know that I'll be keeping hold of this guitar long term. I've gelled with it too much to let it go, so um, I think to complete the vintage aesthetic and vibe of this guitar, it would be nice to give it a nitro refin. Um, I'd probably go Olympic White. I've got a mint green scratch plate to go on here. Um, I've always liked the look of Jeff Beck's guitars um, and the one John Frusciante plays. Um, so that's probably what I'm thinking, but if anyone's got any other ideas, let me know in the comment section. So that was this 1983 Fender JV Stratocaster. I am planning on doing a more in-depth video um, looking at the Fender Japan line, a little bit more about the history there, um, as this guitar, the 57 uh, E-Series reissue and the uh, 89 Esquire have all become pretty much mainstays in my guitar collection. Um, so I will be doing a more kind of in-depth video about Fender Japan, and specifically from the 80s um, in the not too distant future. But if anyone's got any questions, do let me know in the comment section, um, or if you get any more information, um, I'd be very interested to hear it, so please let me know. Um, other than that, thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.